New Year's greetings, everyone. This year in 2017, this country, Korea, and the world face many challenges and issues to address. So today, we want to look what's ahead of us right in this program, up front. And for this discussion in studio, we have Mr. Kim sung Yeol, managing partner of law firm Kim Jang and Lee, joining us. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us. And also on my right side, Professor Che Sang Mi, uh, Associate Dean of Yiwa University's Business School. Thank you very much for joining us. Happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, let's take a look at what are the, some of the issues that we need to cover today uh, in the video, and then we'll start our discussion right here. Year 2017 has begun, and a lot of different challenges are ahead of the global society. The U.S. President-elect Donald Trump's unexpected moves are expected to intensify the fluctuations facing the international community. All eyes of the global society are on the increasing competition between the U.S. under the Trump's America First drive and China, who has accelerated efforts to take a leading role in the global economy. Trump has already taken a strong stance against China since the election period. He has named a fierce critic of China to lead a newly created White House Trade Council, which is expected to intensify a trade war between Washington and Beijing. U.S.-China power struggle has also been expanded to other areas aside from trade. China has militarized the controversial South China Sea area by actively building artificial islands in the region, which might aggravate the trade disputes with the U.S. Confrontation between the two countries have become more prominent, along with the ongoing controversies over the One China policy, and it has raised the possibility of the new Cold War between the U.S. and China as well. If this foundation is affected by the damage and damage, the relationship between the U.S. and China will not be able to continue to work. How to deal with the aggravating power struggle between Washington and Beijing is one of the biggest challenges facing the Korean economy, which has been heavily dependent on exports. Self-driving cars drive along the road. Robots follow the movements of human beings, and people can control airplanes in virtual reality. These are the scenes that can be seen in the fourth industrial revolution, which is combined with intelligent technologies, including artificial intelligence, robots, and virtual reality. The younger generation, who will take a leading role in boosting the fourth industrial revolution, has already been adapting themselves to the changes. I made a robot, and I can make a robot with the robot. The government has proposed 18% increase in its budget this year for the emerging industries as part of an effort to better deal with the fourth industrial revolution. Upfront discusses the expected impact of the power struggle between the U.S. and China on the Korean peninsula, as well as the outlook for the upcoming era of the fourth industrial revolution. Okay, we just had uh, take a look at the issues that we could discuss in this, uh, you know, program here. But let's start with some of the issues that our guests have in mind. I guess we can pretty much, you know, going beyond the, what a video has covered, we can uh, talk about anything, basically. There are so many issues out there. Uh, a lot of people say G2 issue is one of the biggest ones, mm -hmm. China and U.S. competition. I guess particularly that's because of the, uh, Donald Trump's new presidency and also uh, President Xi Jinping's new statement about what they, uh, what China has in mind this year. Uh, Mr. Kim, what can we say in terms of the, our observation or outlook for the G2 competition for the new year? Yeah, I think uh, there has been uh, mm -hmm. a tension between G2's uh, US and uh, uh, China mm -hmm. uh, in uh, various fields, including uh, political, diplomatic, uh, trade-related, uh, territory related uh, uh, areas mm -hmm. and especially in the field of traders 
uh, there is and it will be a, a tension. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it is called the new uh, Cold War. And especially in the after uh, elections, uh, during the, the campaigns, uh, Trump uh, already just uh, pointed out uh, the unfairness of trade. Right. It's very focused on the China. Mm -hmm. And also recently, they established a national uh, trade Council in White House, mm -hmm. which will be a control tower or trade related matters, and he also appointed uh, uh, Professor Navarro, mm -hmm. uh, who is very uh, a hardliner That's against right. China, mm -hmm. and therefore it will be evident uh, there's intensified tension between uh, United States and China, especially in the field of trade. Okay, makes a lot of sense, Professor Chair. Would you agree? Uh, with the idea of going as far as saying or uh, calling this new Cold War in terms of G2 competition? Yes, I certainly agree with um, the struggle will be harder in this year. Um, I think that uh, the, the, what, uh, the Trump government insists that they're going to pursue the protectionism to save jobs in the U.S. Um, I also think that China never going to compromise with the U.S. government. That's why all around the respect, including politics, economics, and technology, the competition will be harder and harder. So we need to think about what's going on, what's going to happen to Korea. You mm -hmm. know? So that's more important. Let's talk about what's going to happen to Korea a little bit later in the discussion here. Overall, uh, Mr. Kim has mentioned the trade side of the conflict overall in the bigger picture, like in diplomacy and so on. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the, the big picture in terms of this, what we see as a possible conflict intensifying uh, this year? Yeah, this, uh, the situations uh, are located in the uh, Korean Peninsula is more complicated mm -hmm. and uh, unpredictable because trade issue uh, itself is not a uh, trade issue uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. It can be extended to the political, diplomatic issue as well. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's like uh, the another as a fact we should keep in mind is just the uh, nuclear uh, threat by the North Korea. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's very, very uh, difficult uh, uh, situation we are faced, uh, we are faced uh, with. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, therefore, we just uh, when we face any issue, uh, we should be careful, and also we should uh, uh, very detail mm -hmm. uh, uh, analyze the, the its characteristics of the case and its implications. Otherwise, we will jeopardize our uh, countries. Okay, makes a lot of sense right there. And uh, Professor Che, I'm particularly uh, mindful of what Xi Jinping said at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. He said uh, China is going to work on preserving territorial integrity and their uh, independence in the in terms of what they want to do in the global affairs and so on. So uh, Mr. Kim mentioned nuclear issue re regarding North Korea. So mm -hmm. in terms of nuclear issue of North Korea, as well as territorial conflict in the South China Sea and so on, what do you see ahead? Do you see the overall uh, the cooperation for nuclear uh, getting ahead in a positive way? And do you also see the territorial conflict in the South China Sea going into a more negative direction? Um, I think it's going to be negative direction, you know, um, between that the confrontation getting harder between uh, the U.S. and China. Uh, maybe that Korea situation will be getting worse. Huh? So uh, we need to do a lot of uh, difficulties between the U.S. and China. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the uh, Professor Che mentioned overall conflict here, but on the North Korean issue, what China wants is stability in the in the Korean Peninsula mm -hmm. here. So, uh, what I was uh, referring to here is pro possible cooperation in a way, cooperation and competition in the South China Sea. Perhaps uh, more of the competition or conflict. But on the nuclear side, how would China try to achieve the, what they want in terms of nuclear issues regarding North Korea? Oh, I think it's very, very difficult, and uh, in, in some part, it's like uh, China is, uh, should support North Korea mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the power struggle uh, 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 between the China and the United States. Mm -hmm. And all, also, uh, on the other side, just the China want the, the, the Korean Peninsula to be stabilized, and they, they, wanna, uh, the, they do not want the chaos mm -hmm. in these areas, mm -hmm. and therefore, uh, at this moment, maybe it's like uh, the China position will be deep, that varies, uh, depends on the characteristics of the case. And uh, there are also the, the Russia and the Japan was, uh, also mm -hmm. very is flexible. 
uh, depends on the characteristics of the case. Uh, right. Otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. maybe difficult. And uh, sometimes, uh, maybe just the Russia and the Japan is on the side of the United States, mm -hmm. and on, on other issues, maybe they ch change the, the positions. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, I think it's very uncertain mm -hmm. that these mm -hmm. uh, exist and that there's a uh, the future is, is unpredictable. At the end of last year, uh, we were uh, sort of not exactly hoping, but perhaps many people were expecting, perhaps the uh, Moscow-Tokyo relationship may improve, but the, the summit meeting between Abe and Putin mm. didn't really work out that well, uh, probably because Putin went ahead with his kind of like a tough line approach here. So as Mr. Kim mentioned, uh, Russia and Japan are important players here in the, the superpower dynamics surrounding mm -hmm. Korea. What do you see in terms of Russia and Japan, in addition to what he said, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when they face this G2 competition between uh, Beijing and, and Washington? Um, I don't think that Russia and Japan are going to, um, you know, the ruin their relationship between the U.S. and China. Um, instead, uh, instead of that, they're going to pursue the maximum benefit uh, the, through the relationship between those two countries. Mm -hmm. So as you can see from that, uh, that uh, the, the Japan's uh, try uh, try to um, to work with uh, mm -hmm. the RCEP, that's a Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, mm, to okay. work with the China government. Mm -hmm. uh, they pursue the more economic partnership with mm -hmm. China. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of Russia, um, as you know, the Trump government uh, recently picked that um, the Rex Tillerson for mm -hmm. uh, Secretary of State. Right. Uh, he is um, the Exxon Mobil CEO. Mm -hmm. So because of that, many uh, that that uh, what. Um, uh, people say that the relations between the U.S. China, U, uh, U.S. and Russia, mm -hmm. going to be closure this year due to uh, huge energy development project mm -hmm. among those two countries. Right. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we should keep in mind that uh, Russia and Japan, which is uh, possibly classified as a second tier uh, com uh, uh, mm -hmm. country, so maybe right. it is a. They would uh, not like to be like called that way, but yeah. yes, well, yeah. I, I, we see what you mean. Right? Yeah, yeah. And therefore, they try to take advantage of this confrontation between the United States and China uh -huh. as much as they can. Right. And therefore, we should be uh, keep in mind mm -hmm. and uh, and also every decision, mm -hmm. uh, political decision make uh, should be uh, very uh, cautious mm -hmm. and uh, uh, very uh, how can I conservative. I see. Uh, you know, uh, we just uh, talked about uh, what uh, he called a second tier power here, but perhaps then the third tier power, which is are South Korea and uh, Taiwan, right, yes. in, in this case. Yeah. What do we have to do? Uh, if we say Russia and Japan are going to be very realistic about what they need as a national interest and so on, uh, we wonder, so South Korea, for instance, may be too much. Some of us, some of the observers here in Korea, the mm -hmm. foreign policy, are concerned whether South Korea is too much uh, bound by the historical memories, historical trauma, rather than seeking, uh, being a realist, seeking yes. the solid national interest for the mm -hmm. nation of our time. What do you see, uh, your observation of how Korea uh, should handle this G2 competition, keeping in mind what Russia, how mm -hmm. Russia and Japan are going to be handling it? Yes, um, I agree with your opinion. So we need to pursue more practical interest and maximize, try to do um, to maximize our benefit like uh, Japan and Russia. So. We don't just, you know, um, uh, the put in all of our decision in the memory, the historical memory, as you said. So um, why don't you just do a lot of talk like um, talk with China, China and uh, the U.S. like Japan did? And why don't you pursue more uh, the corporate project to develop the, not only energy, but also technology with the China and the U.S.? Mm -hmm. That's a practical mm -hmm. you know, approach. I think we uh, now moving on based on what we have oh. discussed so far in the big picture, moving on to specific issue here, uh, we have discussed uh, RCEP, perhaps Japan uh, jumping the ship of TPP and jumping into the new uh, sinking ship of TPP, moving into new uh, promising sh ship of RCEP, for instance, the trade pact led by China and so on. Uh, we have a lot to discuss on the trade side. Uh, Mr. Kim, you have mentioned the, the trade side we are seeing m uh, kind of a uh, what do you call it, the prospect of uh, greater concern ahead, especially with Trump being in the office and his cabinet members, some of the hardliners in the, uh, in the cabinet joining. 
Uh, what, do you, what do you see in terms of Korea's trade relations with the United States? Particularly, I mean, some people will be concerned about the, the possibility of uh, Korea-US FTA being renegotiated and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just uh, during the campaign, just uh, Trump is, uh, just point out the unfairness uh, of the <coughs> United States and the Korea fair trade agreement. Mm -hmm. And also, just the, the chair of uh, uh, National Trade uh, Council mm -hmm. uh, was uh, appointed uh, uh, professor, no, no, uh, no, uh, professor. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, therefore, uh, I think he is a very hardliner, and therefore is uh, more uh, st uh, just uh, stringent uh, trade mm -hmm. barriers uh, under the protectionism uh, will come out. And also, we should take care. We should be prepared for such kind of uh, situations, mm -hmm. especially. And also, maybe also the our export to the uh, China will have some kind of some difficulties. And also, most uh, of uh, Korean companies uh, whose uh, uh, the manufacturing facility is located in China, mm -hmm. and they they will be the direct. Uh, they will suffer from the direct uh, damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I guess those are very important points to keep in mind. Going slightly, going back to the uh, Korea US FTA, uh, Mr. Kim, the uh, you know a little bit earlier, uh, later, uh, later part of last year, you know, after the election of Donald Trump, Korea's Minister of Industry and Trade actually expressed his view that Korea may be willing to renegotiate Korea US FTA. And there have been some criticism inside Korea about his words. They were saying he was too premature, he was too, uh, too much going forward there. He should have said something else otherwise, uh, you know, something other than Korea's willingness to sit on the table. What is your personal observation about Korea's, uh, trade, Korea trade minister's uh, acknowledgement that Korea may be willing to come to the table? Was it too uh, yes. early? Yeah, it's already they opened the card mm -hmm. and uh, too early, and mm -hmm. that is not, not so good in terms of the diplomatic uh, the, the strategy. And uh, yeah, but, it's, uh, but we should keep in mind that the top priority is focused on the, the unfair uh, trade practice mm -hmm. uh, between the United States and the China. I see. And I, so therefore, so I, so maybe uh, yeah, we cannot exclude the possibility that uh, 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 Korea-US uh, uh, FTA mm -hmm. will be negotiated. Mm -hmm. But uh, just the, the priority is, is a little uh, behind, and therefore, and uh, maybe it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, too early to just uh, make some uh, just, uh, a decision whether mm -hmm. or not it will be renegotiated. Uh, negoti right. Talking about China, Professor Che, uh, these days China is doing a lot of things regarding Korea and economic relations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people speculate it's because of the China's thinking about the THAAD issue, the, the missile defense issue here. We are seeing fewer uh, travelers, uh, visitors yes. uh, for coming from China these days, and there are different allegations of what China is doing to Korea in entertainment industries and so on. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think let's think about this big picture here. At the same time, uh, there are concerns about the, what China is doing on the manufacturing sector. They are trying to uh, substitute. Uh, they are trying the import substitution policy on their manufacturing inputs. Uh, trying to replace Korea, uh, what's coming from Korea yes. by producing, um, uh, you know, on their own inside China, is overall trade relationship between China and Korea declining? What should Korea do about that? Um, actually, you know, the Korea because of um, you know exporting, we, we could export a lot of uh, high value the parts and components to China, uh, and then China assemble it and then export it all the finished good to U.S. Mm -hmm. Because of that, we got a lot of benefit, and that's why we depend a lot on China mm -hmm. uh, on export perspective. The, um, but uh, we are not well prepared about China's um, you know, um, decision making recently. So mm -hmm. uh, what you need to do, we need to go back to Beijing. What do you need to do? We need to develop our technology mm -hmm. uh, to the high technology. And also we need to diversify all our um, export market. Mm -hmm. That's the main things mm -hmm. we're gonna focus on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just uh, recently the, the industrial uh, reform of China mm -hmm. just uh, is to develop the, the intermediate goods mm -hmm. rather than uh, import right. uh, from the other countries, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, the problem is that the eighty percent of our export mm -hmm. product mm -hmm. to China is uh, intermediate goods, 
and therefore we should change and we should prepare for the industrial reform mm -hmm. of China and also but the the important thing is that like China is very important export market. Right. Almost 26% uh, of our export right. uh, is to, to China. Right. And therefore, just, uh, we, we, some people just uh, talk about the diversification. Mm -hmm. But I have some different opinions. Please. And, and uh, mm -hmm. we might focus on the maintain the current uh, just relationship with China mm -hmm. as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And then uh, someone told the China plus one. Mm -hmm. And maintaining such a relation with China and then also we should explore any other alternatives, mm -hmm. or including some kind of export market mm -hmm. for the intermediate goods, because it will take time. And that is very important. The question is, however, if we want to preserve the current relationship, trading relationship with China, mm -hmm. what are the things that we can do? We are feeling, I mean, uh, we're not uh, here. I need to go back to the point about entertainment industry, for instance. This mm -hmm. is not manufacturing trade, yes. but, but China doing all this tough stuff on Korea. Mm -hmm. And on what kind of leverage do, does Korea have in terms of trying to maintain what we have and not losing what we have uh, gotten so far. Yeah, that is tough, tough is the call. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true, but I think in, uh, we are just uh, currently uh, situation is very uh, difficult. Uh, in even uh, difficult situation, we stick to the basic principles. Trade issue is just trade issue. Mm -hmm. We just uh, maybe just uh, 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 we criticize China with those words saying, look, thought is thought, and then your tourism is tourism. It's a separate <laughs> question. And, and the free trade is important, so why are you trying to reap, uh, you know, uh, substitute uh, your imports? Yeah. Uh, do we raise our voice uh, or do we keep quiet? <laughs> no, sometimes we just uh, raise our voices. Mm -hmm. And also just we just uh, stick to the principles. And uh, in the long, uh, long term, mm -hmm. we will uh, get some of the... Is, uh, uh, satisfiable uh, mm -hmm. the outcomes, mm -hmm. and therefore maybe just we just uh, uh, just uh, take uh, some positions uh, is is very uh, formally mm -hmm. and uh, just stick to the the basic principle. Right. That is uh, very important. Right, focus on the principle and yes. some patience and caution would actually pay. Right. Makes a lot of sense. Let's move on to the. Uh, uh, next topic, that's technology here. Last year was a big year in terms of artificial intelligence, and uh, we have, in this program, talked a lot about you know, artificial intelligence. AlphaGo, Isedol, uh, their big match last year. Uh, overall, so more than other countries, I think Korea became last year a kind of like epicenter of the global AI trend because we had this uh, Go match between yeah. <laughs> AlphaGo and Isedol. So more than any country around the world, we are very mindful of this issue of the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, Korean government recently released a uh, you know mid to long term plan in terms of how we're going to deal with fourth year uh, the, the the AI uh, driven uh, economic development ahead here. Uh, Professor Che, from the business school perspective, what do we see in this pro program? How do you evaluate it? And overall, in the big picture, what do we see in terms of how prepared Korea is for the uh, fourth industrial revolution? Um, actually, all of the country in the world paying mm -hmm. a lot of attention on fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. Korea also, you know, uh, in timely in timely manner, um, uh, released a policy to react that mm -hmm. revolution itself. Right. So it included like a major technological uh, changes such as. Uh, for informative intelligent society mm -hmm. and uh, generating like a for, uh, for a fifth generated mobile communication mm -hmm. and kind of 3D printing issue, ICT, mm -hmm. convergence shipbuilding and cybersecurity R and D. So um, basically, I think um, the, our policy touched some major technological change mm -hmm. as well. But we need to do more. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're not fully ready to evaluate well, how good the plan yeah, is. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah. need more time. Because yeah, because government just released the topic, mm -hmm. not a, you know the the detailed right, policy. Right, That's right. 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 Mm -hmm. need to see. Yeah, just the uh, yeah, plan is plan. But it's, uh, the the problem is that there's some kind of control tower. Mm. Just the the the. The, the government is in charge of this matter is, is a, just the agency mm -hmm. on uh, you know just the ministerial level, mm -hmm. and therefore it, uh, just the con more high level control towers is needed as IP presidential uh, council on IP or any other uh, the presidential council mm -hmm. level uh, mm -hmm. control tower is very important mm -hmm. because it's like there are some conflict 
and uh, some area is like uh, uh, it's not clear mm -hmm. uh, uh, as far as uh, as jurisdiction is, jurisdiction is concerned, mm -hmm. and therefore I think uh, we need uh, uh, just uh, uh, more high level control tab. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is mm -hmm. yeah. In business schools, there are a lot of concerns about the youth employment, I guess. Yes, Young people studying mm -hmm. business in your schools and getting mm -hmm. jobs ahead. And uh, in terms of what the uh, fourth industrial revolution means for those people who are thinking about their career building and so on, how are you advising your students? Um, you know, um, in five years, there will be so many jobs going to disappear, especially related with a white collar job, administration, uh, administrative job, the office worker. But um, besides of that side, the other side, like a business, a financial sector, and technology, computing, mathematics, there will be more jobs going to create it. Mm. So if that uh, the young people, if they're not prepared to wear about this new age, then we can guarantee that they can have a job in the future so you know in this at this time they need to understand what's going to change mm -hmm. uh, what's the dynamics mm -hmm. and um, also they need to focus on technology a lot because the first um, industrial uh, revolution comes from technology itself mm -hmm. so uh, people says you know uh, there will be no distinction between uh, human natural mm -hmm. and artificial mm -hmm. so which means every part of our lives there will be technology mm -hmm. So they need to understand more about technology, need to learn, like uh, the computer programming, that will be important. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that regard, mm -hmm. just, uh, I'd like to emphasize the innovation of the education. Mm -hmm. For example, it's like, uh, the, let me just illustrate one example. There mm -hmm. are uh, two farmers. One just, uh, he uses the server. Another one is uh, use the, uh, the tractor. Mm -hmm. Then, just, uh, just the, 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 the farmer just always uh, think about the how quickly mm -hmm. uh, he can dig out the soils by the server. Right. And uh, some the, the education systems, uh, how quickly you can uh, dig out the, the server, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean, sometimes it doesn't mean anything at all. Right, right. Maybe just, I agree with you. maybe yeah. we should, uh, should uh, just teach them how mm -hmm. to obtain the tractor mm -hmm. and uh, how operate the tractor. That mm -hmm. is important matters. And the uh, new accumulation of the knowledge right. and uh, or, or just, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, diligence itself mm -hmm. is not sufficient. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe inside, you know, long-term perspective mm -hmm. and wisdom is needed. And also, we just uh, <clears throat> should be willing to expose ourselves to uh, the, the change the paradigm. Right. Right. Otherwise, mm -hmm. maybe just uh, uh, we lose the mm -hmm. competitiveness, and but they are willing to the, the just uh, maybe uh, 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 adjust uh, themselves to the uh, change the, uh, the paradigm. So I, I think the uh, the he will get the uh, mm -hmm. we be, be more pre promising, mm -hmm. and he will get the jobs. Overall readiness for Korea in a bigger picture. What do you see in terms of going beyond your uh, bound your business school, uh, the nation as a whole? Mm -hmm. uh, how ready are we in terms of your observation? Uh, I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, we are far below, far, um, you know, I mean, the, like a developing country, including, mm -hmm. the China is not a developing country, mm -hmm. but they did very good job in uh, terms of preparing that mm -hmm. new revolution mm -hmm. because they have like a pure internet-based company, well-known, globalized, well-known company like Tencent, like Alibaba right. and Baidu, but we do not have. Mm -hmm. We have a well-known company like a Samsung, Hyundai. They're focusing a lot on manufacturing itself. Is travel based yeah. economy basically unfit with the fourth industrial revolution? Yeah. Um, I can say, you know, we need to remember the lesson from mm -hmm. that historical company like Nokia mm -hmm. and Motorola and Sony. Mm -hmm. They were the large, well-known company at one time, mm -hmm. but now they failed. Mm -hmm. So um, in the new generation, the large, a big company cannot be flexible, mm -hmm. hard to be flexible. So it's, it's very hard for them to adjust themselves to fast changing environments. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you okay. know. But okay. maybe uh, sometimes big companies are more flexible. Mm -hmm. Because ah, yeah, right, that right. is some. Uh, they, there are some saying that uh, mm -hmm. because uh, they are just, uh, for example, they are the, the competitiveness. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes just uh, uh, provide uh, the service or the goods in the very low prices, right. and uh, they are afforded. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, in in this case, maybe so some kind of uh, reforms is necessary mm -hmm. for the several companies. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, currently, uh, everything is is uh, arranged uh, on permanent uh, uh, employment, mm -hmm. but. It can be replaced by the uh, uh, kind of private arrangement, mm. maybe company in company. 
Yeah, they can be uh, just uh, one of the solutions. Mm -hmm. And also, they are also sometimes very flexible. All right. So big players have the resilience and flexibility to adapt to uh, big changes and so on. Let's see which perspective here will get uh, to materialize in the future. And for now, we have so much more to discuss. So we will move on to the more of the domestic issues right after this. Korean society will start to see its working age population decrease in 2017. It means that the country will turn into a demographic onus era, escaping from the era of population growth, which has enabled a rapid development of the country. Shrinking working age population will cause a slowdown in the growth of the labor force, in that way, the country's productivity and spending power will decrease, which might be led to the economic slump as a result. And the problem is, the speed of such phenomenon has been quickened. According to the recent report announced by Statistics Korea, the number of babies born in the month of October hit a record low since records began. Korea has faced a deepened crisis along with the accelerated decrease rate of the human resources, which has been one of the critical growth engines of the country. A variety of changes are expected to take place in terms of the government policies related to the public's livelihoods. All companies will extend their retirement age to 60, and minimum wage will also increase in 2017. All eyes are now on the newly implemented welfare policies, whether it can stimulate consumer spending. And the government has recently unveiled its 2017 Economic Growth Outlook, which includes its plans to inject more than $16 billion in order to revitalize the country's economy. Korean society has faced a drop in working age population since 2017. And we take an in-depth look at the government measures that have been newly proposed as part of an effort to tackle the low fertility rate as well as the aging population. Well, as we have just seen uh, in the video, for instance, uh, the population problem is one of the biggest concerns of the nation in terms of our economy and what we are looking ahead. Uh, in terms of those people that you run into, uh, the executives that you educate and train, uh, what do you see uh, in, in the sense of how well prepared Korea is in dealing with so-called demographic onus or the the population cliff, whatever, the Korean business community or Korean economy as a whole, how well are we prepared? Um, I do not think we are well prepared about that situation mm -hmm. because, um, as you know, our firms are so focusing on export itself. They right. don't actually don't care about domestic demands. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, the population decreasing is not a big issue because mm. there are so many things they need to concern a lot, like um, with uh, economy downturns mm. and like a household debt. Mm. All things issue are more urgent than. They are more uh, short-term yeah. issues. Yeah, short-term issues. And the issue, population yeah. is a big issue for the long run, which is most overbearing in that mm -hmm. sense. But you are saying uh, our economy as a whole is not well prepared. Uh, uh, I guess we are concerned because as we see these young people growing up and joining the labor market and uh, establishing family and not establishing family, we can see the trend ahead clearly. Uh, one of the, the trend that comes to our mind is these days a term popularized by, I guess term itself was popularized by uh, President Obama in his video, YOLO. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you only live once, YOLO lifestyle and so on. Uh, early healing consumer is another term that we are saying. Those Koreans in their 30s seeking the relaxed and leisurely life mm -hmm. rather than getting engaged themselves in uh, setting up a family and starting, uh, you know, having babies and so on. 
Uh, in your firm, I'm sure you have many young lawyers mm -hmm. who are unmarried, who are seeking perhaps the YOLO lifestyle or the uh, early healing consumers. Is that true? Yeah, I think it's, uh, uh, young lawyers, especially mm -hmm. female lawyers, have mm -hmm. some difficulties mm -hmm. uh, 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 getting married because, uh, uh, because they spend uh, almost time mm -hmm. on the work. Working too hard. Yeah, yeah. You should let them work less. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, what about, what about the, the male side? Uh, do we see the imbalance? Young female lawyers working hard, not finding time to date and finding their partners while uh, male young lawyers finding it a little bit easier to get married? Or is it happening on both sides of the gender? Uh, that is the difficult. There are various uh, reasons, but it's uh, female lawyers like uh, some dip difficulties in find out the uh, appropriate uh, the partner. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but the male lawyers, uh, uh, I think uh, it's uh, comparatively easy. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, that is my personal opinion, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. But there's no it's a kind of, there is no gender discrimination mm -hmm. and uh, sure. therefore, but currently it's like uh, just uh, they, the, for, for example, the female lawyers uh, mm -hmm. just, uh, uh, just devote the, himself, the, herself uh, in just uh, the, the enhancement of their uh, career mm -hmm. and they are more focused on that and after that, after achievement, he is just ready to get married mm -hmm. and therefore that is too late mm -hmm. or maybe, it's, and therefore, May just uh, they uh, lose uh, the time, appropriate time, but mm. but this, uh, that is a kind of a general tendency. Right, yeah, right, right. It's not totally uniquely for Korea, but global signs as well. In countries like Singapore, we see yeah, yeah. similar problems yeah. and so on. But the younger students, Professor Che, that you are teaching in your school, uh, female students who uh, have their career building ahead of them, mm -hmm. we know already all these familiar stories. But how serious is it in your personal observation? Because we, they say, uh, even if those uh, young people who are getting married, one out of five couples choose not to have babies. Uh, what do you see, what do you hear from young female students that you're teaching at Iwa Women's University? Actually, the young female students have mm -hmm. not gotten married yet have any experience to have, you know, balanced work and family yet. Ah. But uh, mm -hmm. for my own uh, experience, mm -hmm. you know, in Korea, our mm -hmm. society not favorable for, not favorable for the female worker to maintain the work and family balance. Mm -hmm. Because um, our society, there are so fierce competition all around the world. Mm -hmm. If I quit the job to raise my children, mm -hmm. then it's very hard for me to come back to Korea again. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to wait for me. Mm. So I need to... The corporate culture as a whole. Corporate culture. Right. The well, I'm sector. thinking of another important uh, element here for this discussion, that is uh, male partner's attitude, mm -hmm. helping household and then helping uh, childbearing and uh, child raising and so on. Uh, do you see some change in terms of young uh, male Koreans in terms of their attitude or is it uh, uh, considerable enough? Is it, is it uh, big enough change that we can take it as positive or not enough yet? Um, I think for young generation, mm -hmm. they help a lot to to maintain their family, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. You know, two couple, mm -hmm. if two couple work, you know, each, um, they, they have job, mm -hmm. and then it's hard to, you know, raise children, it's mm -hmm. not enough. They, mm -hmm. Somebody need to help to take care of their children at the daytime, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So even with mm -hmm. more of younger Korean male willing to do the housework, still overall structurally, you're saying, yes. it's very difficult in Korea, costly to raise a family, having babies. Interesting term these days, one economy, uh, one yeah. person, single household uh, economy. One economy is a hot button word in yeah. Korea these days, especially yeah. this year. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like we ask different people, different opinions here, and some of the optimists say this could be actually a big breakthrough for the Korean economy because manufacturers will come up, will have to come up with all different products for a single house, a single person household. Uh, uh, families and so on. Do you agree with the, the positive observation on this negative trend or which side do you take? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, to some degrees I, I will take a more positive uh, views mm -hmm. about the one uh, economy mm -hmm. uh, because like uh, generally so as a, uh, uh, individuals this kind of one economy based on the one 
economy uh, the period mm -hmm. is like in, uh, consumer is more picky mm -hmm. and uh, more selective and there are expressed willingness mm -hmm. uh, or if their needs and preference uh, uh, are I will be set, fully satisfied, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, just the, the companies adjust themselves mm -hmm. uh, to this kind of uh, the needs and the preference, and the, the goods and the products should be customized. Then, I think it will be a contributing factors mm -hmm. in the vitalization of the uh, Korean economy to mm -hmm. some uh, degree. It's true, mm -hmm. but it's, it cannot be <laughs> right. all. Right. Yeah. Korean government spending. 80 trillion won for the last 10 years without much results in terms of having more babies. Yes. Uh, what is your observation as a woman uh, in terms of po the government policy dealing with this low birth rate? Yes, um, our government spends so much money. Mm -hmm. It's a true. Mm -hmm. But I think, in my opinion, they are losing focus. You know, um, focus is wrong. Okay. Yeah, focus. What do you mean? Um, actually, I have five mm -hmm. um, year old boy, mm -hmm. and then I receive every month uh, around eighty dollars from my district office. Okay. It's it can be a little help to raise my ch uh, child, mm -hmm. but it cannot be the reason to have another baby. You mm. know. So just Money spread out. Money doesn't work out. Yeah, it doesn't work Everything, out. Okay. And the amount itself is too small mm -hmm. to decide to have another. You mm -hmm. know, so that's the problem, and um, it is very difficult to you know uh, to find public kindergarten mm -hmm. uh, for my child to mm -hmm. enter. Mm -hmm. So it's another problem. So are you saying mm -hmm. rather than giving the just uh, cash, cash to the people, try to set up more of the uh, support facilities? Like a kindergarten, yeah, not only support facility, daycare yeah, uh -huh. daycare center, mm -hmm. and also we need to change whole our culture. We need to respect, you know, mm -hmm. the female with baby, mm -hmm. and then uh, the private sector. Mm -hmm. I mean, the company uh, should be very generous about the maternity mm -hmm. leave. Mm -hmm. Actually, whenever that the company give mm -hmm. the maternity leave, right. they think they are losing productivity That's rather true. than you know mm -hmm. um, they are invest for the future. Because mm -hmm. female workers are seen as. Uh, the, the cost factor when they have yes. babies and so on, when yes. they work less and so on. Mm -hmm. All those thinking needs to be changed. But th this is a hard economy you're talking about, loss and gains and benefits. And you yeah, have like to think about money coming in, money going out and so on. It's mm -hmm. very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, what Korea is doing as a whole, trying to encourage young people to have more babies, is that the fundamental solution? Or like some people think, it, me, myself included, Opening up immigration, uh, you know, make this economy more open. W what's your view on this? I think that is, uh, yeah, I agree to you. And uh, I think opening the, the, our uh, job market to the foreigners, or just maybe we should change the immigration policy, mm -hmm. uh, more willing to open the, uh, to the uh, uh, market to the foreigners. Mm -hmm. They just uh, come to the Korea mm -hmm. and they just uh, contribute to our economy mm -hmm. just uh, by providing the, the the, the, how can I say, service, etc. When I say that to uh, some people, those people who react negatively often mention mm -hmm. all these immigration related problems in other societies like in Europe and perhaps in the United States, Donald Trump being as a result mm -hmm. of that and so on. Uh, how do you respond to those kind of concerns? Yeah, but every uh, system have a pros and cons. Yeah, that's true. But it's also uh, it, uh, England is uh, previously very is like open-minded mm -hmm. to the immigration mm -hmm. policy, mm -hmm. but it's now just the result in the Brexit, and also the uh, Spain's like they are suffer from the, the economic uh, difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very a little uh, less open because they're not as open. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but mm -hmm. the United States is currently is good because mm -hmm. they are more. Uh, just open to the, the immigration mm -hmm, policy, mm -hmm. but still, it's like uh, some problems. That is, but anyhow, just we should uh, uh, reconsider mm -hmm. our current immigration policy, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that is very important thing. Also, I, I just add one more thing: right. it's like uh, to increase the fertility rate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, two, we just keep in mind the two things. One is uh, mm -hmm. infrastructures. Infrastructure, uh, yeah. okay. It's nowadays, uh, it's, uh, it, uh, married couples, uh, the both of them mm -hmm. uh, get a job. And uh, the female uh, workers mm -hmm. uh, should, they, are should, they should feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. They work and uh, 
the, at the same time raise keys. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, so, uh, this kind of infrastructure should be uh, provided on a government side. Right. And it is a very example is a, a Sweden case. Sweden mm -hmm. is uh, uh, provide a 480 maturity uh, leave mm -hmm. for, for, to both uh, male and the female. Right, right. Uh, and also, another thing is like, we may refer to the England case. England case is... Uh, Which is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they just, they provide some kind of allowance uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the married couples mm -hmm. who has uh, a, a kids mm -hmm. under 15 years old. I see, I see. And uh, therefore, it's a continuous... Couples thing, with uh, younger yeah. child. Yeah, and the okay. injection of the money uh -huh. and the infrastructures. Uh -huh. That is very important. So also, as you, you pointed out, maybe just open. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, maybe at this stage, maybe considering, mm -hmm. uh, the seriously considering the opening of the, our... Uh, the, the, the labor market mm. or just the open right. the immigration policy. Right, right. Yeah, that is very important. Right. And whether we have more babies coming in our way or immigrants coming to Korea, we have to continue on improving our uh, society and the country as a whole. And this year, 2017, there are a long list of new policies that are being introduced to make uh, our society better and the economy working better. Uh, Professor Che, in your observation, what was the most important change or new ideas that's been implemented as in the form of new policy this year? Mm, I haven't studied a lot about new policies so because mm. um, it's the uh, beginning of the year, mm. but I found out that recently our government mm. released um, the permitted pure internet-based bank, oh, okay. the K-Bank. Uh? Isn't it a little bit late, though? I mean, other mm -hmm. countries have already mm -hmm. yeah. done it yeah. and uh, yeah. once again I wondered whether this is a result of control tower mentality but, <laughs> but that's very interesting the financial yes, sector the financial innovation. Sectors. There will be okay. more freedom uh -huh. so uh, the main difference between traditional bank and mm -hmm. pure internet bank mm -hmm. that technology company gonna be uh, the actual operator mm -hmm. so they're gonna provide 24-7 um, 365 mm -hmm. service all the time mm -hmm. and they have more efficient structure so cost and all kind of um, um, you know, price going to be, you know, reduced. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. You know, Finally, the time for pure internet banking is yes. with us. Finally, after all these years. In your observation, what are some of the notable innovations, policy innovations for this year? From the yeah, side? and uh, in addition to the pure internet-based bank, mm -hmm. and also maybe extension of the retirement age ah. to the 60. Mm -hmm. It is a mandatory that, and... That's a big issue here. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, aren't you concerned or uh, are you on the optimist side or the pessimist side about what this will bring to us, the extension of Yeah, the it is very age. difficult and mm -hmm. uh, maybe just the two uh, the parties concerned. One is existing employees. Right. You come to the labor market. Right. So the people. company itself. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe it depends on the different views. Mm -hmm. the for the existing employees, yeah, they are very we happy. We're yeah, happy. Yeah. We're going to be here until 60, uh, age yeah. of 60, right? It's just the same line. It's like a kind of uh, line with the, the, the welfare systems. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but uh, newcomers, oh, it's a big right. Fewer jobs entry for them, barrier. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, right. and uh, therefore, maybe it's, uh, we need some kind of uh, the, how can I policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm to cover this, uh, the problems. And the third one is the like, company itself, right. there's some financial burden right. because they pay m more. Mm -hmm. Because normally it's like... Uh, For, from a lawyer perspective, do you see the peak wage system itself is working properly now? I think peak wage system is essential part in making this extension of right. retirement age. In Korean business uh, community, is peak wage system working now, yet? Uh, but it's, it, yeah, I think uh, it will be inevitable mm -hmm. because otherwise maybe the company cannot afford it. And uh, therefore, the uh, kind of, uh, this is a kind of, uh, this kind of uh, extension of the retirement age mm -hmm. uh, was uh, implemented on a social welfare uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, I think uh, some kind of adjustment is uh, necessary. Mm -hmm. And also some kind of additional follow-up measures mm -hmm. for the newcomer. Right and uh, also some kind of quarter systems. Maybe th such kind of uh, the supplementary uh, measures uh, mm -hmm. should be provided. Otherwise, uh, there will be uh, some kind of uh, uh, some, uh, com conflict or uh, some kind of uh, uh, difficulties, mm -hmm. uh, uh, especially for the, uh, the young uh, generation. Right. There will be uh, difficulties in mm -hmm. getting a job. That is so the pose a social problem. Those points are all the more important because we now are hearing that government may actually work on further extending 
the retirement age from mm. the new one at age of 60 to newer one, 65. So the, the challenge and the problems will actually compound yes. in the yeah. future. So mm. those are real big concerns. Uh, Professor Che, uh, we wanted to talk about the increase of the minimum wage and the government supplementary budget for yes. boosting the economy and so on. But for the interest of time, I think including all those pers uh, your views on those issues together, I think it's time for us to wrap up our discussion here yes. in terms of what's ahead of us here in Korea to make the society better and economy more, more robust. What are some of the points you have in mind as your, your, your wrap up comment that we should be mindful of? Um, actually, um, you know, as you, as we mentioned a lot, you mentioned a lot the control tower issue. Uh, at this time, we need to think about all of us need to work together. Mm -hmm. huh? So that's an um, important thing. So mm -hmm. um, all of us, including our government mm -hmm. and um, the organization mm -hmm. and people, we need to keep in mind that, you know, in, in your future, our all economic and the political situation will be very hard. Mm -hmm. So we need to, uh, to, if we lose our direction, then mm -hmm. we will be um, cast away quickly. Mm -hmm. So our people, all of us need to, to work together in mm -hmm. a one accord, that's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Also, we need a very strong leadership with mm -hmm. um, a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. and uh, you know the smart decision making, mm -hmm. that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, there are a lot of uncertainties and difficulties uh, this year. And it's almost like the same phenomena which we faced in the late E dynasty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, almost, uh, therefore, I think uh, mm -hmm. internationally, right. I think that every issue is to be very carefully uh, just uh, reconsider and uh, take on appropriate uh, positions, mm -hmm. otherwise you will jeopardize because it's like uh, there is uh, some kind of nuclear threat by North Korea right. and uh, some kind of protectionism mm -hmm. and uh, low growth, low economic growth, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, I think more uh, strong leadership. Mm -hmm. Maybe strong you may, leadership. you don't like it. The, the, Let's the have another show on strong leadership. <laughs> but this uh, control mm -hmm. is, is, uh, is uh, required. And mm -hmm. also, we just adjust ourselves to the, the change the, uh, the new paradigm mm -hmm. which just the first uh, industrial uh, revolutions right. uh, has brought to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, for example, so as you right, maybe the, instead of a uh, control towers, maybe a, we can just establish a, a kind of a blockchain, mm -hmm. maybe it's, uh, the change of uh, the, the paradigms. Mm -hmm. And the, our, we should be willing mm -hmm. to adjust ourselves, expose yes. ourselves to mm -hmm. the new change, the, uh, the paradigm and mm -hmm. uh, some kind of environment then we will get some some things. Mm -hmm. I'm very uh, optimistic right, in that right. regard. Great words. Uh, every time the strong leadership is mentioned, I, I often mention that uh, in this liberal democracy, uh, all citizens, including experts like ourselves, have to be working harder to come up with better ideas for social consensus rather than yes. asking the leader to make right. his or her decisions. That's shifting our burden to the leader. Yes. And that mindset comes from the uh, Korea's dynastic uh, past, uh, and so on. So I guess we can talk about that issue uh, in another program here. But uh, setting that aside, we have had wonderful views and perspectives today. And I'm sure our viewers have enjoyed very much your discussion about the uh, uh, you know, challenges that we have ahead. So with those words, we want to wrap up our discussion here. But next time when we have other issues that are important for Korea as well as the world, we want to ask you to come back to this program and that will be next week for sure. So until then, this has been Kim Byung-ju.